Praise the Lord. God sure is good. I know. See, the, the, the God is a God of balance. And you say, well, I'm just not into all that shouting and yelling and screaming. I want I want truth. Well, the Bible said we're to worship Him in spirit and truth. So, see, if you get too, if you get too, uh, too far over on the truth side, there's no spirit. It can b- become very orthodox, right? right? But then, it, but then if you get too far over here on the spirit side, you've got a lot of motion, but you don't have truth. And so there's a balance. There's, a, there's always a ditch on both sides of the road. And so uh, I think it's good. I, listen, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, man, I grew up in that, I grew up in that fire. I mean, just camp meeting, right? And, and, uh, and there's some value to that. But then I looked at some stuff that was preached and, it was good, but I don't know if it was all contextually accurate, right? right? But then I've been in some places that probably is contextually accurate, but it's cold. Right. That's right. You, it seemed like more like a hearse ought to be out in the front instead of cars. I mean, amen. But right. I'm glad we serve a, a risen Savior. Yeah. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 24 this morning. I want to look at verse number 5. Now this will be a familiar passage of scripture and you'll know it. And you remember verse number 1. We won't really look at this. I want to preface it verse 1 through 4. It was the first day of the week and these women are going unto the sepulcher and they had come to the place, they found the stone rolled away, and they did not find the body of Jesus. That's a good thing, by the way. Amen. They weren't expecting that, but they didn't find him. And uh, they were pretty upset about it. I mean, can you imagine? They'd come to embalm the body of Jesus, and he wasn't there. So again, they thought someone stole him. They did not remember the promise. And may I say this, that's where we are a lot of times. When God does something supernatural, it so bothers us, we forget the promises of God. Right? And so we get down to verse number 5. Well, verse number 4 says, It came to pass they were much perplexed. That's not a Davidson County word. Perplexed, they're in pretty bad shape. Right? I mean, Brother Matt, they're, they're, they're out of socket, so to speak. And so verse 5 says, as, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Right. Again, go back to verse 4. And the Bible said, there, Two men stood by them in shining garments. So these, these ladies came to the sepulcher. They came to the tomb of Jesus. And they were perplexed. And the stone was rolled away. And there were uh, two men stood by them. their shining garment. And they said this, uh, they said, why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. He is not here. He's risen. That's what it said. Verse 7 said this, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. There it is. Remember this morning we talked a little bit about that, that as Jesus had his disciples there, he told them, he asked Peter, he said, or asked all of them, said, who, me, who do men say that I am? They said, well, the some are saying you're a prophet or you're Jeremiah, Isaiah. He said, who do you say that I am? They said, uh, uh, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Lord goes on, according to Scripture, to to tell them that God revealed that to them. So you don't get saved until God reveals to you your need and who he is. Right? I mean, you have to see yourself a sinner and you have to see God as sinless. Then the cross makes sense. See, it doesn't make sense unless you see yourself as a sinner needing a savior. Right? If I'm good enough to go to heaven, then what are we doing here, right? If I'm good enough 
that when I get to the pearly gates, God says, listen, you're good enough. You're at good outweighs your bad. There's no reason for Jesus to die. There's no reason to, for him to rise again. There, he wouldn't have even come. So we live in a world that says, well, if your good outweighs your bad, if you're religious enough, if you're baptized, if you sign a card, if you, you know, lay it out. No, the, the, everything about heaven and everything about salvation will rest on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And so he's not here. Well, he's risen. And so the first day of the week commemorates the resurrection of Christ. That's why we have church on Sunday. Every Sunday we are to commemorate the resurrection of Christ on the first day of the week. Right? If we do nothing else on Sundays, we ought to make much of a risen Savior. If we never sing another song, if the choir never sings again, the musicians never play, I never preach. Uh, listen, if we do nothing else, we ought to come in here and we ought to, to glorify a risen Savior. Because there's other people all over this world that are worshiping stumps and they're worshiping idols and they're worshiping people and they're worshiping stuff and they cannot say that we worship a risen Savior. That's the least we ought to do, right? And so we have church on Sunday, not on Saturday, because we're, we're commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It symbolizes a new life as we celebrate every first day of the week. We call it the weekend. But the weekend ends on Saturday, technically, and this is the first day of the week. See this, this right here on the left? That was last week. On the right, that's this week. We're not celebrating the cross. The cross is over. We're celebrating the resurrection. And I'm thankful for the cross because the cross shows us just how much God hated sin, that he was willing to put his son on the cross to die in your place. But it also shows just how much God loves mankind, that he would put his son on the cross. But now we're celebrating the resurrection. So his resurrection is the pledge that he has perfected all that is needful for salvation and in him we rest because we ha his work is finished right. Right, we don't have to worry about it I mean it's done, it's over right? and so as we look at the first resurrection morning we have the confirmation of the Lord's promise of the resurrection he's already told them over and over and over here's where it's going to be and then they get to the tomb brother John they're like well what happened? Well, again, that, that's what happens to us a lot of times when God does something supernatural in our life. We say we have faith and we trust God. But then when he does what we even pray for, we're going to, oh, you're not even going to believe what happened to me. Why is it so unusual that God does the supernatural in our life? Maybe it's because we're a lot like these women and we go to the tomb expecting to see the normal instead of the abnormal or the supernatural. So the Lord is risen indeed. You say, I don't believe it. doesn't matter. It right? doesn't matter if you believe it or not. God's existence and God's plan is not dependent upon you and me believing it. It is our privilege to believe it, Brother Bart, and we should believe it, but God is not stymied. He is not confined to our belief system. Well, I just don't believe God will do that. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. I don't believe God could, I don't believe God could, uh, uh, could rise from the dead. Well, it doesn't matter. That's right. You 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 want to do, you go, if you need to if you need to you go ahead. You can go to you can go to Israel. You can go check the tomb out. And you you'll find he's not there. Right. Wonderful. Right. Some of you say I'd love to do that. You go ahead. I don't need to. That's right. Lord God. How can you be sure? Because he prophesied. That's what he do. Right. Now we have the confirmation of the word of God that these ladies came and he wasn't there and then these two men in white said he's not here, he's risen as he said. So that tells me I can believe everything in that book. Amen. There's not one thing that God promises in that book that I won't believe. Now I may have trouble fixing it in my mind but I can believe it. Right? I may not understand it. I may not explain it, Brother Foy, but I can believe it because God, God can't lie. Well, preacher, how can you say God can't lie? God can do anything. He cannot lie because lie is the absence of truth and he is truth. There's no absence of truth in him. So if, if God says it in his word, it's absolutely true. Well, I heard a preacher. I don't care what the preacher says. I care about what God says, right? So, so he's given us his truth in his word. So what can we learn from this scripture about the resurrection 
and about the victory that you and I are to have. Now, I'll give you four things, and I understand the time. Uh, we're not having service tonight. Some of wouldn't be back if we did have service tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and preach as long as I want to. Right? Just, just hold on. We, you know. I, know, I know we call it the worship hour, but he's confined by nothing. So that what do we learn about the grave, right? The tomb. Well, first of all, I want you to see this. The seeking at the grave. Why did they go to the grave? I mean, they, he had just died. They had just put him in the borrowed tomb. By the way, again, you know this. It was more of a cave. It was a place kind of uh, hewn out in a rock and and so they, someone would have to roll the stone away. They were going to go in and they were going to, they were going to put spices on him and, and do all those things. Well, that was part of it. But why did they go? Because they, they, they misunderstood what the Lord said. Right? I mean, in, in other words, they misunderstood. Well, they didn't understand the word of God. So they went. Someone said seeking truth. But here's the thing. He'd already told them the truth. He already said, I won't be there. Right. right? So there was, there was a misunderstanding about the word of God. And, and so they were, and I understand this. Sometimes we misunderstand the word of God. And we have to, we have to find out for ourselves. Anybody else been there? There's been a lot of things growing up in church. I, I learned from the Bible and the Bible said, don't do this. And I'm like, I'm going to do it anyway. Come on. Come on, some of you. You're looking at me like, not me, preacher. I got your number right here. I know what the Bible said, but I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to do it my way. Right? You had to find out. Probably didn't work out too good for you. I just know that when God said, don't do this, and I did it, that it didn't turn out good. And when God says, do this, and I didn't do it, it didn't turn out well. But when God said, do it, and I did it, it turned out well. So, so I'm not critical of them because we do the same thing. God lays out in his word, right? There's going to be a lot of people that are not in heaven because they thought they were good and were going to heaven because of the way they want to do it, but it wasn't the way God wanted them to do it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me, and we'll try any other way in the world to get to heaven besides Jesus, and Jesus said, it ain't going to happen. He's the door. So they misunderstood all that Jesus was trying to tell them and so they were going maybe to get truth or clarification, right? But they just, why were they even there? I mean, you know, again, we're the same way. But if they believed Jesus like they say they would, they'd be like, well, well there's no reason for us to go down there. He ain't there. Right? I mean, I ain't, y'all go if you want to, but I'm, I'm good. He said he wasn't there. He hadn't lied to me. Well, let me ask you this. How many times have you misunderstood? That's right. That's and right. you've not trusted God. And you've done things. And you've had to find out. And then you found out God was true. Let God be true and every man a liar is what the Bible said. Some, some, listen, some of us just, we got to find out the hard way. And you'll have scars. And you'll have damage done. It's not that God doesn't forgive you. He will. He's the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. He loves you. But though he forgives us, we still have to face the consequences and the scars that come with not believing him. So they misunderstood the word of God, right? And by the way, Jesus was the word of God. Well, they had the Old Testament as well. They didn't believe that. Then they had Jesus, and they didn't understand the plan of God. They thought Jesus was going to come and set up the kingdom then, fix everything. They didn't understand that he came. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He didn't say the line of Judah that's going to set everything straight. He said the Lamb of God. So he came the first time to die for sinners like you and me, right? He's come the second time to set up judgment against all uh, who are against God. So this time, as uh, he said, you don't understand. They want him to set himself up on the throne, but he was going to the cross. Yes, and so they didn't understand faith in God. Right. Right. They're, they're, all, they had, all they had ever been a part of is a dead religion. Right. Let me help you with something this morning, all right? If all you got is your little up and down and back and forth and 
your, on, your little checkbox Christianity, Come read my on. Bible, there prayed, you know. went to church, Come gave on. my little tithe, Come right? On. Bam, on. bam, look, Jesus, look how much I love you. If that's all you got, you ain't got much. He wants, he wants you to know him. He wants a relationship with you. Amen. Yes, sir. I mean, he, he wants a relationship. I'm a, listen, I'm for the do's and don'ts. But that doesn't, that doesn't get you in a higher standing with God. He wants to know you and wants you to know him. Well, he does know you. But he wants you to know him. He wants you to understand some things about him. But see, all, I was listening to something the other day. This guy was talking about Christianity. And he said, this guy was asking me legitimate questions, brother, for He said, he said, is it religion or relationship? And he said, religion is the ritual side of things, right? right. Do this, do this, do this. Up, down, back and forth. You know, we, do, we don't know why we do it. We just do it because right. we're supposed to. Relationship is that I'm so in love with Jesus that I would not want to hurt him anything I ever did. Amen. That, that's, that's what he wants. He wants us to serve him because we love him. And, and so the, these folks, they, man, they had been part of this Jewish religion for their whole life. And now Jesus is saying, listen, I don't want your religious garbage. I want you to love me and understand me. And so they misunderstood. But then what did they expect at the grave? They expected a morgue. They expected their hope to be dead. They expected their salvation to be defeated. And see, that's where a lot of folks are sitting today. You, you got no hope. Your hope is in some political party. Your hope is in some, you know, uh, some uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Or your hope's in your 401K. Or your hope's in the economy. Or your hope's in some job. Your hope's in someone else. That's not hope, friend. All those things will fail you. Jesus is one who never failed. They didn't go there expecting to see a risen Savior. They went there expecting to see, to embalm his body with spices and to say, this is it, let's go to the upper room and hide. And that's where a lot of you are sitting in your life. You're scared to death, scared to die, scared to live. Until you get satisfied with where you'll spend eternity. Listen to me, you can't live. See, all, all the world's trying to do is dull your senses to what life really is. So it's right. alcohol and drugs and illicit relationships and anything it can to dull the pain when what your soul's looking for is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every time. You say, he can't be the answer for everything. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah, yes, he is. Yes, sir. You're right. so, so they misunderstood. They went. <laughs> they didn't go. Listen. I would hope, now I understand this, the older I get, the less critical I get toward Bible characters. Now some of you are still super spiritual. We were talking about Abraham in our Sunday school class this morning, how when he went to Egypt and he, he, he told Sarah, he's like, now look, we're married and all, but you're, you're a good looking woman. So somebody's going to want you to be their wife. And so I don't want them to kill me. So you tell them you're my sister. And I thought, I mean, there's, there's a flesh side of me. I thought, what kind of man is he? I'm like, you'll take her over my dead body. Well, that's probably what would happen, right? Or what he thought would happen. But then I start looking at myself going, well, how many times have I been a coward? I may not have been a coward right there, but I, there's been times where in the restaurant I should have stood up for Christ, or there's been times at, at work I should. Can I get a witness? Before you go crucifying all the Bible characters, maybe you know you you probably better look in your own mirror and see where you failed Jesus. But they were looking for a morgue, man. They were they weren't going down there to have church. They was going down there to bottle up the tears and say mourn for a while. And see, that's where a lot of you are this morning. You got no victory in your life. You're going to come to church today and you're going to go through your little Easter service ritual and you're going to go live a dead life when you walk out of here. Yes, 
Amen. They were seeking at the grave. They were not seeking the resurrected Christ. They were seeking to mourn the dead Christ. Is that right? Number two, the suitability of the grave. What, what's the grave for? It's a place, place for the dead. They, here's what they said. They, uh, the Bible said in verse 5, They were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth and said unto them, Why seek ye the living where? Among the dead. Why Why are we, that's what I said, church, I'm not, I'm not talking about jump through windows, but church shouldn't be dead. Man, he's alive. Ball game coming up 515 this evening. People, you know what they'll do, Brother Jimmy? Not me and Brother Jimmy, we're good. We've already got an agreement. When State and Duke plays, we're 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 okay, right? But there are some people, Miss Nanette, they'll tear up friendship papers you don't pull for the right team, won't they? I mean, it's, like, it's a stupid ball game. But you'll paint your face up, act like a lunatic idiot, want to fight your best friend over a you know they don't pull for the right team. Scream at the TV. Come on, you're right. Right? Yes, sir. I won't do that for basketball. Gator football, I'll do that now. <laughs> There's a lot of... But, yeah, exactly. But we come to the house of God and we got say we got victory, but we sit there like... <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you ain't, right. you ain't got the same thing I got. I don't want what you got, so please don't rub off on me any. Glory to God. Amen. I mean, they 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 were they weren't going to have church down there. So that the the seeking, but then I want you to see the suitability of the grave. What is it for? It's a place for the dead. Why seek ye the living? The grave is no place for the living. They didn't go looking for Jesus. And that's where a lot of us are. We're like, I don't really want a change in my life. I just want to, I just, I just want to kind of go through the motions. And if Jesus, if you could, if you could save me from going to hell but not change anything, that would be the best thing. Let me let me tell you something. If if, if you do not have a radical change in your life when you quote unquote got saved. You probably didn't. You cannot take this vile body that we have and this vile mind and put something holy in it like the, the Lamb of God and it not radically change you. I ain't talking about a little prayer, right? I ain't talking about a little prayer that I prayed and I feel bad. I'm talking about God save me. See, I did the prayer thing when I was a kid. That didn't work. What I got, I got born again. So, so he said the grave is no place for the living. So let me ask this. Is your life a place for the living or a place for the dead? Is your life, who you are, is it alive or dead? Probably tells you what, where you're at. Right, place for the dead. This, then it's a place for the defeated. Death is the great enemy. Death is the undefeated enemy. The grave is the embodiment of death, but Jesus was victorious over death, and the grave is no place for him. And let me say this, and I'm not trying to be ugly or morbid, but this morning in, in, the, in the early service, I, we were singing. And I don't want to embarrass her, but Miss Beth was, was crying, and I'm guessing she missed her daddy on Easter. Some of you, same, same thing. You've lost people and this is the first Easter you've been without them or maybe right. multiple Easters. And it, it's hard. It's not easy, is it? Right. But you do know, and I know you do, just be reminded that because of the empty tomb, they're all right. They're all right. We're, hey, we're not all right. And it's okay. It's okay for us not to be all right. The Bible doesn't say we don't grieve. It says we don't. We grieve as not like those that don't have any hope. So it's okay to grieve, but think about think about the folks that have to grieve when they don't know where their loved one's going to be. 
Amen. Man, they, they, that, that grave is a place for the defeated. That's why he didn't, that's why he didn't stay. Hey, Buddha's there. Confucius is there. Muhammad is still there. But Jesus ain't there. Why? Because it's a place for the defeated. He's alive. Preacher, I don't believe that. Well, you better believe it because one day he's coming back, praise God. Amen. So, so it's a place for the dead. That's the suitability of the grave. A place for the defeated. But number three, the strain of the grave. I'm, hang, I'm getting there. What? Notice he, he's not here. He's risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of who? Sinful men. Be crucified the third day, rise again. Well, why? I mean, why did he have to go to the cross? That ought to bother us. Brother Jerry, it ought to, it ought to cause us to have joy, but it should bother us a little bit. Why? Because he, he had to go to the cross because of you and me. That's right. Right? So. What is the strain of the, why? What is the sting of the grave? It's the price of sin. See, before sin, right? Before sin, we were going to live forever. In the garden, remember that? Serpent told Eve, listen, you need to eat this tree. Well, nope, God said not to eat of it. Don't touch it. God didn't say not to touch. He said, don't eat it. That's right. He said, she said, God said, if we touch it or eat it, we'll die. Satan said, you won't surely die. <laughs> God just knows that when you eat that, you'll be like him. Yeah. Come on. So he's trying to withhold good stuff. Didn't he do the same thing now? God's, God's the devil's saying, listen, he's just trying to withhold good stuff. He don't want you to have fun. Don't want you to enjoy life. He's trying to. Put you in this in this constraint, right? That's what he told her. She said, "Huh." Now let me say this: Don't blame her all that much. Where was where was Adam? God gave Adam a help meet. What did he do? Well, when Satan tempted her, he wasn't around. Doesn't look like. So she came. He came back. Said, "Eat this," and he ate it. So here, here's my point. If you're born again, if you're going to heaven, we're going to have to stand in line and ask some questions to Adam and Eve. Right. Brother Bradham said, Adam, why'd you mess this up? Right. Some of you ladies, I'll go up to Eve and say, Eve, what was that about? Right? right? What was that about? <laughs> Adam, why didn't you man up and not eat that thing, man? We'd been, oh, Right? But, again, time out, what did we said a little while ago, we give the Bible, folks, all this difficult. If you, if you was there, you'd done the same thing. Not me, preacher. Hey, it takes, we, Brother Matt, we've not even seen yes, the right. glory of God right. like they did. And they did it. I mean, they, they had seen the perfection of God. That's right. sure. You and I, man, we feel like God's left us alone for 15 seconds. We mess up, Right? <laughs> The grave is the price of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We're, we're all sinners. Let me say this. Ready? If you're a guest here, I'm not, I'm not giving you heresy. I'm giving you. You say, well, my sin's not all that bad because I haven't done all this terrible stuff and this guy's sin's worse than mine. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not doomed because of the amount of sin or the degree of sin. You're, you're, you're on your way to hell this morning because you're born into the human race. That's all it is, right? Well, well, my, what about all these people that murder and commit adultery and all this stuff? That, that's wrong. But unforgiveness is wrong too. Bitterness is wrong. See, all of our sins hung him on the cross. So it's not the degree of sin. It's the fact that you were born into the human race. And you sin because you're a sinner. This morning you... If you had the, the wrong thought or whatever it is, 
You're that way because you're a sinner, and you're a sinner because you were born into the human race. So it doesn't matter the color of your skin or nationality or whether you're male or female or, you know, uh, uh, whatever it is, we're, we're all family. You trace us back far enough, we're all family. We're all family. We all go back to Adam and Eve. I mean, we look at each other and we'll make fun of them. You got some crazy people in your family. Well, they're your family too. <laughs> right? They're your family too. So be careful when you start criticizing other people's family. Say, your family's crazy. Go back far enough and they're yours too. And, they, and the reason they're crazy, it probably came from your branch of the tree over there somewhere. Just the price of sin, but then there's the peace of the soul. We, we have no peace because of sin. We have no peace. Death is the great separation from our loved ones. It destroys peace. And since Jesus overcame death, we can again have peace. I didn't say it's easy. But through him we can have peace. And then I'll give you this quickly. I want you to see number four, the speaking at the grave. Here's what it said. He's not here. Verse six, he's not here but is risen. Remember, remember. Memory's an unusual thing, isn't it? Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and the third day rise again. So here's what he's saying. Remember, he's probably, he's probably Davis County redneck. He probably said, remember? Remember what Jesus, not remember, he said, remember. Remember what Jesus said? He laid it out for him again. Here's what he said to you. Remember that? Oh, yeah, right? We've got to be reminded. I'm not giving you any great truth this morning. I'm trying to remind you. Remind you. Why? Because when you walk out of here today, the devils he's probably already fighting you. Right? He's going to fight you. Some of you, if you're not a Christian, you've never trusted Christ, he's fighting you, going, well, you probably got more time what that guy's saying is not true. I, you, you don't have to believe anything I say. Right. But you take that book right there, that Bible, go through the book of John and see if I'm not telling you the truth. Yes, sir. Just go through the book of John. Right. Go ahead. Good job. You say, he's already starting with you. A few minutes, they're going to give an invitation. Don't you move. If you can get out of here today, you'll be all right. That's right. You might be. Guarantee me, you say, oh, maybe next week, preach. Guarantee me. Guarantee me you'll be here. Oh, I'll be here. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't have one breath. You got here, car accident. Seem like that's happened a lot lately. Right? You don't know. So, so Jesus is the resurrection. So here's what they said. They're given a message of hope. He is not here. Where? He's not where? In that grave. Hallelujah. You better thank God he's not in that grave. It, listen to me, church. If he's in that grave, we're the dumbest people on earth. We're the dumbest people on earth. Well, how can you say that? I'll tell you exactly how I can say it. Because... I was talking to a boy about, I said, I, I got, I called to preach when I was 31 years old. I started pastoring this church when I was 31 years old, I'm 53. Now I won't say this, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't regret this a bit, but my family and I have given the best years of our life to this church. Is that right? If he's not alive, then I'm an idiot, because I could have taken the best years of my life and went in and made a lot of money. But I believe in this so much that I, that, right. and you do. I'm not saying just me. You, some of you have given up your life to serve Christ. Right. And if, if he's not alive, we're the most ignorant, dumb people that's ever walked the face of the earth because we've given up everything on this one thing that he's coming back. That he, that he died, Brother Jimmy, that he rose again and coming again one day. If that's not true, what we're doing here today is makes no sense what that what those disciples did made no sense all the martyrs over history have died for nothing if that's not true 
He was, we have hope because he's alive. That's all it is. It's not religion. It's not because I'm Baptist or you're Methodist or whatever. It, we have hope because he's alive. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, just, just, he's alive. It's a message of hope. He's not here. That's what they said. Here's the message of help. He's risen. The hopes, he's not here. The helps, he's risen. What's that mean? Well, the, the fact is he is risen because he's risen. I will rise. You'll rise. One day, after a while, we're going we're gonna to see our loved ones. We're going to, if, hey, if they put you in the ground, guess what's going to happen? One day, hallelujah. Well, I believe, preacher, when they put you in the ground, that's it. <laughs> believe whatever you want to believe. Right? Believe whatever you want to believe. That's right. You're wrong, Amen. but you can believe whatever you want to believe. Amen. Go ahead, man. Too much evidence. See, you have no hope. You, see, if, if there's no afterlife, if there's no, there's no heaven, there's no Jesus, there's none of that. That's, see, that's what this world is trying to do. Saying that you, you don't have to worry. Why? Because if there's none of that, we're just going to live however we want to on this life. Because when, when they put you in the dirt, that's it. But if you're wrong, But if you're wrong, you don't have another chance. Right? You live any way you want to. Believe. You don't, You walk out and say, I ain't believe none of that he said. That's fine. But if you're wrong, that's what I want. If, if I'm wrong, brother Shane, if I'm wrong, I've still had a good life. Man, I'm talking about I've stayed away from... A lot of, lot of stuff, a lot of scars. I've had, I got scars because I hadn't always lived for the Lord. But over my adult life, right? I'm pretty sure unless I ain't got to worry about cirrhosis of the liver. I don't, I'm not woke, woke up where I didn't know, you know, where I've been. I, I, I got same wife for 30 years. I mean, if it's a good life, Brother Jerry. So if I'm wrong and the dirt's it, I'm taking the dirt nap and that's all she wrote for me, I've had a good life. But if I'm right, I'm right, by the way. Not cause me because my worst days are here. My best days are there. If you're wrong, your best days are here. Your worst days are there. I think I'm going to believe this book. Because there's too much evidence not to believe it. And I think I'm going to trust to God. You say, how do you know your way? Hey, it ain't my way. I, listen, my way is wrong. But Robert, I'm telling you, I've, I've changed my mind on stuff. You have too. His way is right. I don't know a lot. You can debate me and I might be wrong on some points. And you're like, well, you know, you're wrong on that. All right, well, we get to heaven. Jesus can say, that's not what I meant. And I'm going to go, okay. But I do know this part. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but my me. He said that. That ain't even me. So you, he said, here's what he said. You ain't going to heaven unless it's through me, through Jesus. So. The Lord is risen indeed. That's why we're here. That's why we celebrate. He's risen indeed. Let's stand together. Let's bow our heads this morning.